Today, we're going to recap the movie Freaks of Nature, released in 2015. Dilford is a town known for its riblets and its population of humans, zombies and vampires. All three races coexist in a somewhat peacefully manner. At Dilford High School, Dag Parker tells his friend, Parminder, that he's making great progress with Lorelai, a hot girl who studies in their school. Parminder says Lorelai is only using Dag to stash her herbs. Dag protests, telling him he should be more supportive as his friend. Minutes later, Lorelai passes by and just ignores Dag. In the meantime, Petra flirts with the most popular vampire boy, named Milan, who just invited her to an upcoming vamp party. When a nerd boy named Ned Mosley attempts to get to his locker, Milan pushes Ned, who gets knocked to the ground. Dag sees the whole thing from a distance, but walks away. Later, Ned tries to discuss his essay with a vampire teacher, Mr. Keller, who gave him an F. The teacher says his essay was fantastic, but he failed him for fun. At lunch, while Parminder listens to Dag ramble on about Lorelei, Ned politely redirects a zombie away from the human food line. Petra sits with her friends at a table, where she reveals she's going to a vamp party with Milan. Her friends are impressed, but warn her about the vampire's bad reputation and mean attitude. As Petra defends him, they all see Milan being mean to Ned again. A zombie girl attempts to help him with his spilled food. The next day, Dag and Parminder walk to baseball practice and notice a red Porsche. Dag recognizes it as Rick Wilson's, the man who fired his mom for attempting to unionize his zombies employees. While handing out uniforms to the baseball team, Rick recognizes Dag and mentions his mom. He gloats about firing her and makes Dag angry. Since Rick is sponsoring the team, he has a moment to talk about his company, Malfasta Corporation, which manufactures riblets. Later at practice, Rick and the coach talk about Dag's exceptional pitching skills, the best they've seen in a long time. Chaz Jr., who's Ned's brother, stands in front of him and insults Dag. As they get ready, Lorelai watches in the stands. Dag concentrates and throws the ball straight to Chaz Jr.'s eye, knocking him down. Everybody gets worried and rushes to a screaming Chaz Jr., Lorelai just looks at Dag, impressed by his skills. Later, at the vamp party, Petra and Milan make out in a trailer. Petra gets alarmed when Milan tries to bite her neck, thinking they were only there to sleep together. The vampire reveals he has already slept with Lorelai. With Petra, he wants something more lasting and special. She feels flattered and kisses Milan. In the meantime, at the Mosley family dinner table, Ned's father, Chaz Sr., laments Chaz Jr.'s injury. He soon starts to pick on Ned, asking why he doesn't eat riblets like everyone else. Ned explains he's allergic to it, adding that the riblets contain bad chemicals, such as TXP. Later, when Ned says he wants to be an engineer, his parents persuade him to settle for a less ambitious life. Ned gets angry and leaves the house, appalled by the lack of support from his family. At the Parker's house, Dag tries to get intimate with Lorelai, who is smoking some of the herbs she stashes in his place. When Dag tells Lorelai he might be in love with her, she laughs at the situation and makes up an excuse to leave. Shooter, Dag's father, walks in just after she exits through the window. He sees the bag of herbs and Dag gets embarrassed. Soon, both his parents are in his room and are very understanding about the herbs. Dag tries to explain that it's not his, but they change the topic to bodily changes. They describe an enormous change that men in the Parker family go through, but Dag has had enough for the night and bids them good night. Later that night, Ned goes to a zombie area and observes some of them wander around and eat brains. He is approached by the zombie girl who tried helping him at school and becomes impressed at how all zombies seem to get along. After seeing how zombies don't care about anything, he tricks the zombie girl into biting his foot to turn into one of them. Meanwhile, Petra lies in her room, starting to feel the effects of becoming a vampire. She looks in the mirror and notices that she no longer has a reflection. She then goes to a supermarket to buy some blood. Suddenly, a popular girl from school sees Petra and her purchases, saying she didn't take Petra for a vampire. She hurries out of the store in embarrassment. Later that same night, Ned, Dag, and Petra find themselves outside, contemplating their frustrating lives. Much to their surprise, a bright light from a massive alien ship appears hovering in the sky. A few days after the aliens show up, Rick speaks in front of the human community who gathered at the high school gym. Chess Sr. notes the vampires are absent from the meeting, suspecting they might have made alien contact. At the same time, Mr. Keller addresses a vampire crowd, speculating that humans have conspired with the aliens to eliminate their population. 
Petra walks in and notices Milan sitting there. She waves at him but gets ignored. Chess Sr. and Mr. Keller continue to talk to their respective crowds until both groups agree to launch strikes on each other. In the meantime, Ned rallies the zombies to get back at the other two races and leads them towards the town. Shortly after, at the town square, the three factions engage in a bloody battle. While the whole town is fighting, Dag finds Lorelei in his car, smoking some stuff. When she suggests they get intimate, Dag drives off to his house. Elsewhere, Petra confronts Milan, but he just brushes her off. She insists, and Milan admits that he only seduced her to get her blood. Enraged, Petra tries to attack him, but he easily tosses her into a car. As Dag and Lorelei are about to get it on, a vampire fighting a human breaks through the door. They escape through the window and are surprised by an explosion, just as they get attacked by a group of vampires. Chess Sr. comes to their rescue, wielding wooden stakes. He stabs the vampires and fights the creatures with some expert moves. As he gloats about his anti-vampire training, a horde of zombies suddenly grabs him and slowly eats him alive, transforming him into an undead being. As Dag and Lorelei are spotted by a group of vampires, they run for their lives. As Petra wanders around a forest road, she sees Lorelei running with Dag. Her envy gets the best of her and she starts chasing them, along with a bunch of vampires. Eventually, Dag and Lorelei manage to get into a darkened house, only to find out that Ned and a group of zombies are hiding there. The situation gets chaotic as vampires also barge in. As Dag and Lorelei try to escape upstairs, Petra sees them and leaps to catch Lorelei. As Petra bites into her neck, Dag just stands frozen. He then pushes Petra off the stairs and she briefly gets away. He gets a hold of a sharp wooden object and tries to hit Petra, but Ned tackles him just in time. Suddenly, when Petra gets pushed off by a bald vampire, a police car crashes through the house. Eventually, Dag, Petra, and Ned are the ones standing. When they're about to engage, a bright light distracts them. They look outside and gaze at a huge alien ship deploying some smoke-like substance that engulfs the town. Out of the smoke comes a horde of big aliens, disintegrating anything that gets hit by their tentacles. Since it was all coming in their direction, Dag, who takes piano lessons from the owner of the house, starts knocking on a trapdoor, calling for Mrs. Miller. Her son answers back and asks Dag a bunch of ridiculous questions for him to prove his identity. Stuart eventually opens the door and lets them in. Stuart briefly panics at the sight of Petra and Ned, but calms down after a while. As Dag goes to make sure the trapdoor is shut, he hears screams and rushes back. To his dismay, Petra and Ned are already eating Mrs. Miller and her son. As Dag is ready to fight them, Petra persuades him to stick with them, saying they have a better chance of survival. As they hide in the basement, Petra questions Dag's attraction to Lorelei, wondering why he hesitated to save her. As Dag denies hesitating, Petra adds that if he really cared about someone, he would jump right in. The conversation gets around to Ned, who used to be friends with Dag. They find out that he will get smarter if he goes long periods of time without eating brains. Dag then worries about his parents and decides to get out of the Miller's basement to find them. After Petra reminds him of the aliens out there, Dag says they can starve Ned long enough for him to come up with a good plan to defeat the aliens. The next morning, they finally leave the Miller's place, but Petra collapses under the sunlight. Dag immediately removes his clothes and covers her to prevent real damage. They agree to split up and meet back at the high school, but Dag hits a clothesline just as an alien comes up behind him. When they all reunite at the high school, Dag tells Petra that the aliens seem to ignore him on his way there. Ned theorizes that the aliens only detect inorganic matter in clothes, which allowed Dag to slip past unnoticed. While eating lunch, Dag and Ned recall how they used to be friends in middle school. Ned claims that Dag ditched him because he thought he was a loser, but Dag denies it. They continue arguing and Ned angrily walks away. Shortly after, Petra finds a reflective Dag inside an empty boiler. They talk and open up about their vulnerabilities, and Petra eventually cries as she remembers some of her mistakes. Just as Dag comforts her, they start to make out. As soon as they both admit they've never done it before, Dag gets startled when he thinks Petra bit his neck. Petra gets upset and leaves Dag in the boiler by himself. After a while, the trio gets together and discusses their plans. Due to the aliens' presence everywhere, they decide to remove their clothes and walk to Dag's house to look for his parents. They get there safely and the house seems to be empty. As they dress up and move to inspect the basement, an alien suddenly appears behind Ned and attacks them. As he gets hit by a tentacle, Ned disintegrates and Petra bashes the alien's head off. That night, 
Dag recalls a baseball game when they were kids and how Ned, despite being capable, never got the chance to prove himself. To their awe, Ned shows up in one piece, and the two scream in relief. Ned reveals that the aliens simply teleport anyone who gets hit by their tentacles. He deduces that everyone missing isn't dead, but simply hidden away somewhere. Since Petra killed the one who grabbed him, he got dropped before he could move all the way to the alleged location. Ned also figured out that the aliens are after the TXP in Malphista's riblets. He shows them a gross allergic reaction he had to the alien's tentacle as proof. The following day, the trio goes to the riblet plant and Rick lets them in. As Dag and Petra explain to Rick the alleged alien's objective, they hear a scream and find Ned eating Rick's secretary. Rick immediately kicks them out, enraged. Dag then comes up with a plan to get Rick to help them. They are purposefully taken by a group of aliens so they can get to where the Dilford people are imprisoned. After being hit, they find themselves at a Polway Superstore, where each race is separated by a green force field. Milan sees Petra and attempts to drink blood from her, but she punches him in the stomach. Ned meets with his zombified father and brother, while Dag finally runs into his parents, alive and well. He also discovers that Lorelai survived and has turned into a gorgeous vampire. After Petra and Dag ask Ned to come up with a solution to eliminate the force fields, he suggests a DOS attack to overload the security system. The trio eventually convinces all the races to join their plan, and the people of Dilford charge at the force fields at once. Their action shorts out the system and destroys it. So, the citizens make their way to the riblet plant to give the aliens what they want. When they get there, Rick lets them in after being convinced it's all in everyone's best interest. The aliens swiftly get there and also walk in. After Rick shows them the vat of unprocessed riblets, the bipedal creatures turn out to be machines guarding a bunch of small slug-like aliens. The weird creatures all dive into the vat and cause the contents to swirl and grow. Eventually, it all transforms into a tall humanoid alien being. The alien explains that they only came for the TXP on a mission of peace, but then the town went crazy by itself. The aliens only locked them up in the store to protect them from each other. When the tall alien lectures them in a condescending way, Petra gets offended and Rick throws a wrench at him, causing it to attack the citizens. Petra is knocked back, dislodging an ammonia hose. When the spray starts to melt the giant alien, Dag quickly gets Mrs. Mosley to spray ammonia from another container on the creature. In the meantime, Milan grabs Petra and tosses her into a storage room. When Dag notices their struggle, he does not hesitate and immediately jumps at Milan. However, the vampire soon overpowers him. Milan chokes Dag and renders him unconscious. When Dag is exposed to the full moon, he suddenly opens his eyes and turns into a hairy werewolf, finally going through the transformation anticipated by his parents. Dag then attacks Milan to protect Petra, and the vampire fights back. When Dag dodges Milan's jumping attack, the vampire ends up impaling himself on a wooden spike. After a lot of ammonia hosing, the giant alien gets reduced to a ridiculous miniature size. It retreats to its spaceship and drops a powerful explosive to decimate the town before departing. However, Ned finally gets his chance and catches the ball-shaped bomb. He swiftly tosses it to Werewolf Dag, who throws it back to the alien ship. The spacecraft explodes at once and kills the alien. A few days later, at Dilford High School, we see that Dag is turned into a popular kid and even gets hit on by Lorelei. He declines her invitation and looks for Petra, who walks over to him. After seeing Ned bond with Chaz Jr. and the zombie girl, the couple decides to make out under the bleachers. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.